Let's go into the word this morning. Uh, this morning we're coming from 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And we're going to look at verses 16 through 20. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 16 through 20. If I'm not mistaken, I know we looked at um, the previous verses uh, a while back, but I want to touch on these verses here today. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 16 through 20. And it reads as follows, it says, and when he had brought him down, behold, that there were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even into the evening of the next day and there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled and David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives and there was nothing lacking to them neither small nor great neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them, David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drove out before those other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. Amen. If you are taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, it's time to recover it all. It's time to recover it all. As I, as I mentioned before, we looked at the previous verses in the past where it talks about how when David and his men returned back home to Ziglag, they found their city, their town, burned with fire. Uh, the Amalekites came in and stormed their town, burned it with fire. Um, they took their wives, took their sons, took their daughters. They pretty much kidnapped them and took them away. Yeah, the men left, came back, Wives and kids are gone. The town is on fire. Now, when this happened, since David was in charge and David was in authority, David was the leader, the men were so upset with David that he let this happen. You know, because their wives and their kids were gone as well. They lost their homes in the fire. So the men wanted to stone David. They wanted to kill David because of what had happened. David was so, so stressed. He was under so much pressure. He didn't know what to do. The men wanted to kill him. And at the same time, this is also David's town. David's wives and his kids were also kidnapped. So he was in a very tough place. You know, men wanted to kill him. He's trying to think about his wives and his kids and all these different things. And he didn't know what to do. But there was one thing that David did do. And that was he went to God. The Bible tells us that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He went to God and 
He asked God what he should do and should he go after the Amalekites and should he pursue them? And God gave him the answer. God gave him confirmation. God told David, go and recover it all. In other words, go and pursue the ones who came and burnt up your town, took your wives, took your kids. Go ahead and pursue them. I'm giving you permission. You see, a lot of times, Grayson, when we are under pressure and stress and there's a lot on our shoulders, what we need to do is take a page out of David's book. David went to God. He turned to God. He cried out to God, asked God what he should do. And God gave him the answer for his situation. God told him to go and pursue. So as David and the men are on their way to pursue the Amalekites who just burned up their city and took their family hostage, it's a total of 600 men with David. But as they continue on their journey, 200 of the men got tired. 200 of the men could not go on any further. So therefore, 200 of the men stayed back while the other 400 went on to pursue the Amalekites. As they are on their way to locate the Amalekites, they find this Egyptian, this young man. As they find him, uh, this Egyptian, he's, he's tired from his, from his journey. All right? He's weak. He's hungry. Um, as a matter of fact, this Egyptian who was also an Amalekite told David that... Um, his people, the Amalekites, are the ones who destroy their city. All right? And this, this Egyptian, he was tired, he was weak, because he also told David that his master, his leader, when he fell sick, that his leader left him behind. Unlike what David did, when his 200 men got tired, right? David said, okay, we, we, we're going to take care of you guys when we get back, but just stay right here. Let us go ahead. The situation was different with this young man here because they just pretty much just left this young man by himself. He said, you know what? You're, you're sick. You're ill. We don't have anything to do with you. You're slowing us up. So as they're talking to this young man, this Egyptian who was left by his leader, all right, um, they know that he's, he's weak and he needs something to eat. So um, they decide to, to feed this young man, you know, gave him you know, bread and water and different things to, to nourish him, to, to get his strength up. Then after he ate, this young man, this Egyptian, he began to spill the beans. <laughs> he tells them everything that went down. <laughs> He's like an informant now. He said, yeah, this is what happened. We came and we burnt down your city. We took your family hostage and we did all of these things. He began to spill the beans to David by telling David exactly what happened. So then David, being a leader, being a great leader and having the wisdom that he had, he asked the young man, he said, could you take us to where the Amalekites are at? Could you take us there? I mean, you was traveling with them. I'm pretty sure you know where they're going next. Could you take us to where they're at? The young man says, sure, I can, 
I can take you, but I need for you to promise me something right now. I need for you to promise me, David, that if I take you to where they're at, that you promise that you would not take my life if I take you there. David agreed with the promise. He agreed with the arrangement with these young men. He said, you know what? I'm not going to take your life. I'm not going to kill you if you take us to where they're at. Because remember, this young man was a part of the army that went and burned the city and helped kidnap their families. But David agreed not to take his life if he would show them where they're at. So long story short, the young man took David to where the men were at. And this brings us to our text on today. So let's look at verse 16 again. Then we understand the backstory. And what's happening here in the text. Verse 16 again, it says, And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines, and out of the land of Judah. So here you have uh, this young man taking David and his 400 men to the place where the Amalekites are now at. Um, David and his men, they're looking at the Amalekites just celebrating. They're, they're eating, they're drinking, they're dancing, they're doing all these things. Look, it's a big old celebration that the Amalekites are now having. You know, they have the jewelry, you know, they have their, their, their families, they have all these things. And David and his men is looking at them just celebrating the fact that they stole from them. David and his men are looking at the enemy and they see the enemy just having a grand old time. <laughs> you know, they were playing music, I'm sure. They were probably singing. They're just having a great old time. They probably was dancing to the cha-cha slide. They was having a ball celebrating the fact that they had just burned down the city taking their money, taking their jewelry, taking their families, and now they have time to celebrate. Now they have time to throw a party. <laughs> you see, when the enemy takes away from you, he's trying to get away with it. <laughs> he's trying to get away with what he has taken away from you. As a matter of fact, the enemy celebrates when he can take something away from you that you hold dear to your heart. And I don't know about you, Grace Center, but if there's one thing that I dislike, it's a thief. Yeah, it is a thief. You know, we spend a lot of time working for the things that we have. Some of us, we get up early in the morning, go to work, deal with a stressful boss, a stressful co-worker, a stressful project, you know, and we get paid, right, from the job in which we have, and you earn the money that you get from your employer. So with the money that you earn from your employer, you go out and you, you spend the money on things that you want. Why? Because you earn the money that you have. So you get things that you want, that you desire.
that you pay for because of your hard work and your sweat equity. But then someone comes along and they want to take from you for what you purchased, what you bought, what you worked for, what you were stressed out from, how you got the means to get those things and how you earned them. They want to come along and take that away from you. Oh, there's one thing I dislike. And that is a thief. <laughs> David and his men, they, they see the Amalekites having a ball. They see the Amalekites having a grand old time. They see the Amalekites dancing and eating and singing and throwing this big old party with their jewelry on, with their clothes on. With their kids and their wives and they're just having themselves a ball. You know that's what the enemy does when he takes away from us. He goes somewhere, he throws a party and he begins to dance and he begins to celebrate. Say, yo, I got your mind. Yes, I do. And he, he, he's dancing and he's singing and he's clapping his hands and he said, I got your joy. He's singing. And he's dancing. Why? But he has taken something away from you. That's what the enemy does. David and his men, they see this happening. They see the enemy just having themselves a ball over what they just took from David and his men. So, what happens? Once David and his men spot the thieves, who stole from them? That's a good question. Verse 17. It says, And David smote them from the twilight even to the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. So, <laughs> when David and his men saw this, saw them celebrating and partying off of what they just taken away from them, oh, David and his men, they went to town. They, they killed a lot of them. Now, 400 of them got away. But for the others, they slew them. The word tells us from one evening to the next evening. I mean, there was fighting a long time. And they were not getting tired. Look, they were, they said, you know, if you want to party, if you want to dance, if you want to take our things and do all, all of this, we're going to make sure you pay for what you have done. In other words, watch this. They sent a message to the enemy to tell him you will not take away from us like you did before. Yeah, the 400 got away, but I'm sure in their minds, they were sent a message. And sometimes we have to send a message to the enemy. You know, if you're going to take away from me, if you're going to steal from me, if you're going to try to take my peace and take my joy and take my happiness, I'm going to send you a message. David and his men, they smoked. They killed a lot of the Amalekites. But yeah, 400 got away, but they got the message. They got the message. Huh. Verses 18 and 19. Let's look at that. It says, And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Now remember I told you earlier, David went to God 
when his men wanted to kill him because of the town being burned down and their families being taken away. David went to God. God told David, go ahead and pursue. You see, God is not a, he's not a time waster. Um, he doesn't waste time. If he, if he tells us to, to do something, um, especially if we ask him, shall we do this? Shall we do that? He's going to give you the answer on what you should do. And with us, we should have the confidence. We should have the assurance that our Father has given us permission <clears throat> to do certain things. And if he has given us permission to do certain things, we have to know we're going to be okay. The word tells us that David and his men recovered it all. Everything that was taken from them, they got it back. Um, a couple of weeks ago, um, our daughter, you know, she, we were home and it was a little bit late and she gets a phone call from one of her friends um, to go out, to, to hang out that night and so forth and you know, this friend was only going, going to be in town a, a few more days and so forth. And, you know, our daughter said, yeah, you know, I come hang out. And, you know, they called another friend and so forth. So they went to go hang out uh, that evening. So they go hang out and so forth. And, um, you know, young people being young people, you know, you know, you know. Um, they hung out a long time. And. My wife and I, we, we get this text at about, I don't know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, something like that. Um, and she tells us that her car was stolen. Uh, we both jumped up out of bed and, you know, we, we were communicating with her. And uh, she had to take an Uber from where she was at 3 o'clock in the morning to back home. She gets back home and so forth, and we talk a little bit about the situation, what happened, what took place, where were you at, all those questions. And, um, of course, you know, she filled out the police report, did all the things on her side, contacted her insurance, contacted um, the financial institution, all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, the days are going by, and, and, and we can't track the vehicle. We can't find the vehicle. And the police are going to look at the cameras of where the car was at. And they're doing all these different things to try to locate her car. Day go by, no news. Another day goes by, no news. The days are going by with no, no news. Um. You all probably remember a couple of weeks ago, I preached on the topic about my father's business. Um, that Friday evening, as I was preparing that message, just going over it, preparing it and so forth. If you remember, that message was about Mary and Joseph, how when they, um, when they, were, they went to Jerusalem, for the Passover, they head back home, but Jesus was not with them, all right? So they had to go back and they had to find Jesus. In other words, they lost Jesus. That Friday evening, and I don't want to lie on the Holy Spirit, but this is what I feel. It, it, it felt, it's all like an audible voice. It wasn't audible. It was not audible. But it almost felt like that. As I was preparing that message, as I got to that point in my message, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, they're going to find Ashley's car. That was on Friday. And when I got that, when I heard that, 
in my spirit, I began to celebrate. I began to thank God. I began to pray in the Holy Spirit. All of that stuff. That was Friday. The next day, she gets a call that they found her car. In other words, the enemy took something. And I'm pretty sure they were celebrating and having a good old time with what they had. But when you know who you know and know who you serve, I know it's just a car. I get it. I get it. But it was not theirs. They didn't work for it. They're not paying the bills on it. They're not, they're not putting up with a lot of stressful situations to have that vehicle. So it was not theirs. So I know that, you know, they're out there celebrating, doing all these. And look, we know they were celebrating. Look, when we went to go get the car out the tow yard, it was, it was some weed found in the car. So we know they were celebrating in the car. Having a grand old time. Is something that was not theirs. But when God tells you something, just like he told David, he said, David, you can pursue this thing. You can go after this thing. David went after it. And when he went after it, he recovered it all. When God tells you something and he speaks to you and he gives you confirmation of something, believe what God has told you. Oh, you stand flat Put it in the face of the enemy. You tell the enemy, no, you will not have my peace. You will not have my joy. You will not have my mind. What you have taken away from me, I'm going to get it back. I'm going to get back my peace. I'm going to get back my joy. I'm going to get back my mind. I'm going to get back my family. I'm going to get back my finances. I'm going to get back my health. You try to take it away from me. Well, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to recover it all. You may be celebrating on today. You may be throwing a praise party on today. But guess what, devil? I'm coming back and I'm going to recover it all. Come on, talk about to me, Grace Center. The enemy right now is celebrating the fact that he has stolen some things from you. But God is telling me to tell you, you are going to recover it. You want to get back what the enemy has taken away from you. Don't let the enemy take away from you and get away with it. He thinks he has gotten away with it. He thinks he's scot free. But God can get back. What he has taken from you. Verse 20, we're done. It says, And David took all the flocks and the herds, which they drove, they drove out before those other cattle, and said, This is David's spoil. In other words, devil, this ain't yours. Okay. This was never yours. This was ours. And you cannot take something that is not yours. Grace Center, I don't know what the enemy has taken or is trying to take away from you. But whatever it is, it's not his. If he has taken, well, if he has something in his possession that's not his, it's time to recover it. It's time to get a backbone and fight back. What he has, he has it illegally and it's not his. David and his men, they went and they saw the enemy celebrating something that was not theirs. It was not theirs to have. And since God told David, go ahead and pursue them because they took something away from you that's not theirs. God made sure that they recovered it back. Grace and I pray that if the enemy has taken something from you, that you recover it all. 
that you get it back. You know what it is that the enemy has been fighting you. He's been coming at you over different things in your lives. Fight back. Fight back. Go to God and look. Let God give you the confirmation. Of, just like he gave it to David. When he told David, he said, you know what? Go ahead and pursue it. Go after it. <laughs> and if God is on our side, if God be for us, who can be against us? God is undefeated last time I checked. <laughs> no one has ever taken out God. No one has never outruled God. It has never happened, never will happen. God is God. He's God all by himself. So whatever the enemy has taken away from you, I pray that you recover it all. And if the enemy is trying to take something away from you, you need to tell the devil, no, you will not touch this. You will not have this. You will not have my health. You will not have my family. You will not have my peace. You will not have my joy. You will not have my happiness. You will not have my mind. You will not have my health. You will not have it. Take your nasty, filthy hands off of it. It is not yours to have. The great sin of whatever the enemy has taken away from you. It's time. To recover it all. Amen. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. The invitation is extended. Perhaps you're not saved and you're watching today. And you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. And perhaps the enemy has been fighting you, telling you that God is not real. Jesus was just a man. All those miracles you read about in the Bible didn't happen. He's trying to get you away from God. He does not want you to see the light. He does not want you to come into the kingdom of God. So he's telling you all sorts of things. Trying to trip you up. Trying to get you to believe a lie. Trying to get you to come on his side. Maybe today, God spoke to you and told you that today is the day that you place your faith in my son Jesus. Today is the day that you give your life to him. When you receive Jesus Christ into your lives, into your heart, and place your trust in him, what you're doing is you are confessing and believing in the one who came to die on the cross for you. And when you do that, it guarantees that when you leave this earth, when you die, that you will spend eternity with God. You will spend eternity with the Father, with Jesus. You will be saved from the wrath of God on Judgment Day. So if you're watching on today, if you want to place your faith in Jesus, if you want to receive Jesus Christ into your lives, into your heart on today, you can say this simple prayer along with me. You can say, Dear God, thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died, and that Jesus rose on the third day. If you have prayed that prayer, guess what? There's another party going on. 
And right now, the angels in heaven are throwing a party. They are praising the fact that you have placed your faith in Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Send us a private message, email, connect with us. We would love to connect back with you. Amen. For all others, any special prayer requests that you may have, we would love to stay in the gap and pray with you and for you. So send us a private message, email, connect with us. We would love to pray for you. Amen. All right, family, it is now tithes and offering time. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Uh, if you go to our website, thegracecenterga.org, uh, click on that give link. It has all the different ways in which you may be able to give, whether you're downloading our Givelify app, giving through the website itself, or mailing your checks or money orders to us. All of those different ways to give are on the website. Amen. Once again, that's the Grace Center, G A dot org. Amen. All right, family, I pray and hope that this message on today has blessed you. Um, hope you learned some to, something today, and um, I hope you can apply it to your lives. But remember, whatever the enemy has taken away from you, it's not his. It's not his. And you can fight back to get it back. And you can recover it back if you really want it. Amen. But praise God for this message. Praise God for you. Let us now pray as we are dismissed for today. Lord, we thank you for all that you do, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this word that you have given unto us. I pray that it has touched the hearts of your people. I pray for those who have given their lives to your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you will walk with them and show them the ways of you, Lord. I pray that you will connect them with the local church that will help them in their new walk. I pray that for those who have special prayer requests, whatever they're going through, whatever their needs are, I pray that you will intervene and have your way in their lives. I pray for the tithes and the offerings that have been given. I pray that you will not only bless it in this ministry, but bless your people who gave. And bless the ones who wanted to give, but just didn't have it. So we thank you, Father. For all that you do. We thank you Lord for who you are. And as we leave this place. But never ever leave your presence. Please continue to be with us. And strengthen us. We give you all the praise, honor and the glory. It is in Jesus Christ's name. In which we do pray. Amen. Alright family. Until next Sunday. I love you. Take care. Be blessed.